I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. They're the all-in-one business website building platform, which I personally use and love. We'll talk more about them later in the video. As woodworkers, we love giving cutting boards as gifts, and one of the greatest ways to complement a cutting board is with a beautiful kitchen knife. Now, I always keep a stash of these Damascus steel blank knives in my shop just for this purpose because they're very inexpensive. They come super sharp. Uh, I just get these from Amazon. I'll link a bunch of my favorites down below, but they come super sharp and you can even strop them and get them sharper, but they really make an impact. And every time I've given one of these with a cutting board, people always tell me it's the greatest gift they got for that occasion. Okay, the great thing about these projects is they really are inexpensive. I think I bought this one for $39.99 on Amazon. It is beautiful and it's real Damascus. It's actually been etched. What you wanna do is I've got this piece of koa that somebody gave me that's just an off cut and I have a brass rod. Now you can buy these packs of brass rods on Amazon for like 10 bucks, maybe cheaper. I'll link it down below as well. Um, but all we want to do is get a piece that has one flat edge that's going to fit right against here. I think that's called the, no, this is the tang. That's the ferrule. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Alex Steele lately. So we're going to get a piece that fits all the way. We're not going to start chopping it up yet because we want to get it down to shape first and drill our holes and just one brass rod will be fine. And so we're gonna head over to the table saw and get this prepped up. Okay, now that you have a square piece of wood, and if you don't have any woodworking equipment, you can do this with basically some sandpaper and a square block of wood. So I, this was, I traced it just to get a rough idea so I didn't cut it too far, but you wanna just take any square side, press it up against your ferrule there. And if I'm saying that wrong, knife makers, I'm sorry, you can correct me down in the comments. And now you wanna mark where the holes are for your knife. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just center punch our holes here. Now what we're gonna do is go over the drill press or you could use a drill and drill these holes through. And you wanna do that before you separate your block because that's gonna allow you to have grain match on both sides and allow you to locate your two pieces when you go to do the next step. So let's head over to the drill press and drill these out. You wanna remember, you wanna drill just big enough to get your rod through. You don't need it to be super tight, but you need it to be able to locate. So if you're like me and your rod doesn't quite fill up that hole, and I know all of these can be, that's what she said comments, but uh, if your rod doesn't fill up all of this hole, that's okay. We're gonna peen it over later. I know, guys, it's full of them. So let's go drill these holes. Okay, so now that we have our holes drilled, we're gonna want to release two of our scales. And from experience, I want to do that close to the depth of my ferrule here. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but there's an old adage on the internet. If you want to know the correct name for something, say the wrong one, and the internet will correct you. So uh, this is 3 16 here. I'm going to do it a little bit over 3 16 because I want some room for sanding, just a little bit of sanding, and it'll save you time. If you want, if you're uncomfortable making a cut where you cut 3 16 on your table saw, you could do it on your bandsaw with a handsaw, or you can leave this really thick and bring it down with a hand plane and sandpaper later. So we're going to set our table saw, release two of these, and then glue this thing up. Okay, so now we're gonna do our glue up. Now I've trimmed my brass rod into three pieces. And one of the things to note when you're doing this is you want your brass rod to just have a little bit of wiggle room. And that's really gonna make a difference when you peen it over, because you really want it to fill up that area. In fact, I've seen people put a light chamfer on these holes and really peen it over. That'll give you a big mushroom kind of over the top. <laughs> Oh man, this, this video is just full of them, boys and gals. So it's now a good time to tape up your knife because for the duration of the project, especially if it's sharp, you don't wanna risk cutting yourself when you're on the sander or anything like that. We're gonna use Total Boat Epoxy to glue this up, let it sit, and then we're gonna go ahead and start trimming these down. You can, if you want, locate these up in here and trace it out and then get some of that material removed. I'll just save you a little bit of trouble later. I'm not gonna go too close to my line, but I'm gonna remove enough uh, just with a handsaw or the bandsaw just to get it down closer to line so I don't have to remove it later. All right, so let's get that material removed and do our glue up.
Okay, now that our epoxy is dry, we're gonna wanna trim our brass rods just above the wood. When you peen them over, you're gonna hit them with a ball peen hammer or any hammer, and you're gonna wanna spread it out and that's what's gonna make sure that your knife scales stay long term. You know, hopefully they don't put it in the dishwasher, but you know, knives take a lot of abuse and over time the epoxy can fail and it helps to have those peened in because they're gonna keep the scales on there forever. Now, there's a lot of options for trimming this down. I don't worry about it too much, but sandpaper is going to take away the Damascus like I talked about in the beginning, so I try not to use it. So you can use a spoke shave or a block plane to take stuff off. Uh, or a file or sandpaper, it's up to you. So we're gonna start trimming this down and then once we have it completely flush with the metal, uh, we're gonna go ahead and peen these in. Okay, now it's time to peen over our brass pins. Now, I'm not an expert at this by any means, but here's the, the thing that I've learned. You wanna find a solid metal surface and alternate back and forth and let the mushroom over. And they're going to fill up kind of the excess room around your hole. You should have drilled these holes just a little bit bigger. And you don't need to pound them flat because you can sand them very easily. You can file them very easily. That's actually why I left my scale just slightly thicker than my knife because I can hit it with sandpaper but you just want the inside below the surface of this thing to mushroom out and fill that gap. And that's what's gonna keep the scale on long-term. So I just hit it nice and soft. A ball peen hammer works great because it's rounded and that helps it mushroom out. You can use like a nail punch or anything that's kind of solid. Uh, the flat side of the hammer is probably a little aggressive. And if you do it too much, you can crack your wood. So I just do light little taps and then I just flip it on a solid surface and just work them nice and slow until they start to mushroom out. And then when we're done, we'll just sand them flush because they will have already expanded inside the hole and we just need to get them flushed up to the surface. So let's get these peened and then we'll get everything cleaned up. I'm gonna chamfer these corners and round them over just slightly uh, with a block plane and maybe a little sandpaper. And then we'll put some finish on it, maybe some lacquer, uh, something that's gonna be long-term or you could use some Cat's Moses goo and uh, get this thing wrapped up. That came out amazing. Koa, I don't think I've ever seen Koa, this much Koa before. A friend of mine who's a knife maker just gave me a couple pieces of it. And you know what, I'm not a knife maker and this thing may not have come out perfect under the lens of a 30 millimeter macro, but nobody would ever be able to tell that I gave this as a gift to and it looks gorgeous. And it's a great compliment to any cutting board you make. Uh, and anybody who gets this is gonna be so excited. And I can't believe you can make this for 40 bucks. I mean, it's just scrap wood and this knife blank. So that's really, really cool. I wanted to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one business solution web building platform that I have used personally for four years. That's what I run all of my orders, every dovetail jig and stop block t-shirt that you order goes through my Squarespace site. It's so simple to use. I had no web experience when I started this company four years ago. I was able to build a gorgeous site that not only highlights my products, but it also highlights my social media. So it's a really a great place that people can land and find out more about me. Their 24 hour customer service is awesome. I was actually on with them today and they helped me solve a feature that I wanted to add to my site and it was easy and simple to do. So thank you so much for supporting our community, Squarespace. Guys, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe in the shop and we'll talk to you soon.